So um, I have a good news and bad news for you. The bad news is that this presentation is not that technical at all. In fact, all the things described here will work on 12 release or even 11. The good news is it's not technical at all, so everyone can try it at home. Uh, my name's Michael. Uh, I'm actually from Hong Kong, but right now I'm studying pure math in San Jose. Uh, I'm a FreeBSD user since maybe four or five years ago. And accidentally, I start programming in a lot of different stuff, web, iOS, and sometimes um, OS. So there are a lot of reasons why you want to have a GPU accelerated gas in Beehive. Uh, first of all, you might want, you might have some application that you just want fancy graphics. And that breaks into a few categories. For example, you might only want to accelerate one application and or you want to actually render something, but you don't really care what it shows on screens. But the last kind of uh, acceleration is like you actually want the OS have uh, access to some uh, graphic uh, interfaces. So uh, for application level stuff, that's quite easy. You don't need to do anything special. You can just uh, use uh, virtual GL or Alcuda. In that case, you don't need to worry about anything about uh, hardware level things like GPU pass-through or even vGPU, which is kind of interesting thing. Um, so a question about Beehive is, is uh, GPU pass-through even possible? Because if nowadays, if you look at the Beehive wiki, they will tell you that um, GPU pass-through is not supported. I mean, VGA pass-through is not supported in Beehive. But in reality, a GPU is just like any other PCI device with some extra features. So it's, it is actually possible to pass through GPU to Beehive. Uh, for example, this take from my Twitter when I accidentally discovered this fact. As you can see here, it's actually running a RTX 2070, and it's actually running in a Beehive gas. The, re the story behind this is that um, I have a FreeBSD machine at home, and it's running current, but apparently the latest uh, NVIDIA GPUs and the drivers does not support current. It only supports up to 12. And if you want to compile it against current, it will actually crash or panic your kernel. So I was just trying to make a virtual GL server out of it, but I never thought it actually, I get graphics out of it and then actually work on a, a monitor. Um, so GPU pass-through is possible, but it's not perfect. For example, the GPU you try to pass through to the VM must not be used before. For example, if uh, the BIOS or the, uh, the BIOS thing, if it ever run on the GPU, or if your console has ever run on the GPU, you cannot pass through that GPU. So what you need to do is actually use a separate GPU uh, for basic console stuff, and then you need to have uh, another GPU that use only to pass uh, for to pass through it to the virtual machine, and after you pass it to the virtual machine, you can actually only use it once. That means if you want to use it again, the only thing you can do is to reboot the host because now the GPU is. Uh, Did the device reset in the session? Yep, actually, uh, we talk about it later. But actually, I tried to tweak the PPT driver as well, but. It does not really help, but but it's actually an interesting discussion. Uh, uh, we will talk about it later. Um, so it also does not work on all different kind of OS. For example, I was never able to boot uh, Windows from it. It crashed instantly. Yeah, it's Windows. Come on. <laughs> so some prerequisites that you need to pass through a GPU to a guess. First of all, of course, it's a GPU. Pa I mean, it's a PCI pass through. So all the things you normally would do to pass through a device to a Beehive gas, you need to do it here. And again, the GPU must not be initialized yet. And also that the GPU 
uh, must be a real trivial GPU. For example, if you have a laptop GPU like a ThinkPad, and then when in the BIOS you say hypergraphics, you cannot pass through that because sometimes when you actually use it, when you initialize the integrated graphics, somehow it touch the uh, NVIDIA graphics card as well, so that won't work. Um, yeah, the third one is a good one, but you don't really have to do that, which is to donate to BSD projects. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, personally, I've tried a lot of things to work around the initialization problem of the GPU. So the GPU I use is actually RTX 2070, and I spell it wrong, which it actually lied about itself. Um, it actually lied that it support a function level reset, but even the PPT try to reset it with FLR, it actually won't work. So when you try to use it again for other VM, it just won't work. So the way I do it is I modify the drive a little bit and I force it to use PCI power reset, which drop the power state to D3 and bring it back again, it won't work. So um, that's pretty much hopeless until 30 minutes ago, I figured out something. And for we were experiments, of course, I mean, I tried it, right? So, but I don't try on every kind of machine. I mean, I only have one desktop and it's uh, AMD desktop. So maybe VTD offers something different, but that's what AMD offers. Um, I use a Gigabyte X, um, this motherboard. It's not commercial. Um, so why I use it? Because it has five PCIe slots, so it makes doing this kind of things really interesting and easy. Uh, the first slot for the host, I actually assign a 1050 Ti. Well, because it's compatible with the old NVIDIA drivers in the ports. And I actually tried two GPU to pass through to uh, guesses. The first one is uh, RTX 2070. That's the whole reason why I even tried this project. Uh, the other one is the AMD one, 550, because uh, I was curious if uh, Kmod DLM would ever work. And all the guests are installed on a SSD, so the Beehive just read from the diff. Um, we talked about it before, all the Windows 10 guests actually does not work at all. Um, so I check online, try to figure out why. And it turns out from a Debian VGA pass-through wiki, uh, they say that sometimes you cannot really assign the GPU to uh, the root bus uh, because it will confuse the driver. So naturally, I try to assign it to a different bus. Uh, in order to do it in Beehive, I need to pass the dash Y flat, but somehow it actually crashed Beehive with an assertion failed. So I can never really try with uh, Windows. But maybe, I mean, maybe if I have an Intel motherboard, things can be a little bit different. Who knows? So, what's this? so we can have like three BSD guesses. Right, because that's always the safest choice. Um, the first attempt, I was using uh, RTX 2070 and passed through to FreeBSD, guess. So I actually downloaded the latest NVIDIA official driver, so I would make, make it install, it would just work. The trick is that if you want to use a FreeBSD guess, you must use a UEFI loader. The reason why is you want to uh, enable the VT console so you can do StartX. Otherwise, uh, X will actually complain about it and you cannot do anything. And of course, it's X, so the console actually will not show on screen, so you don't get a login prompt and anything like that. Therefore, you actually need to explicitly add the bus ID to X.conf and do a StartX. But if you want to use um, FreeBSD guest and you use ZFS on the guest, that's a trick, which is you ha cannot have uh, NVIDIA low and NVIDIA uh, MOSAT low in loader.conf. The reason why is NVIDIA.ko and NVIDIA MOSAT.ko, they are so big that 
if you load it uh, in loaded conf, it actually does not have enough memory to load setfs.ko. So you ended up with something that you cannot boot, and you, you can tune in the loader prompt and then just disable uh, a blacklist NVIDIA, and then you, then you get setfs back again, and then you go back and you remove it from loader conf, and, conf, and then you add it to uh, rc.conf. That's the only way you can get it work. Uh, but there's a bonus for um, the NVIDIA graphics card, which is that the USB-C port on the graphics card actually works as a USB-C port. Why is it a bonus? Is because I try to pass through uh, two different USB controllers to my Beehive guess. It does not work. For example, when I plug in a USB thumb drive to the uh, USB controller, somehow the FreeBSD guess keep say like the USB detach and attach and detach and attach, which I'm not entirely sure if it's a Beehive problem or a B, a FreeBSD driver's problem. So the next one obviously is uh, AMD RTX driver, which used the DRM K mod. I was curious about this because originally I thought that some magic in NVIDIA driver that somehow we just know how to initialize a graphics card without uh, VGA BIOS. But it turns out the DLM K mod actually just worked. So you actually get the loader prompt from your uh, COM console, but until a point that it loaded the AMD GPU.ko, it actually, um, the, the console actually show up on the screen. So everything just worked. You don't even need a bus ID. I haven't tried that yet, because I actually did just do it for experiment. I mean, come on, if you have a 2070 and a AMD 550, I mean 580, you want to use the NVIDIA one, because it's faster. Um, so that is actually amazing, because that means um, if there's anything go wrong with uh, GPU pass-through, it's less likely to be a driver issue, because DRM is actually open source driver. So you can actually look around and see what's missing. And you probably will not find some secret stuff from NVIDIA that, I mean, you know what I mean. It's like if NVIDIA has some secret sauce, then DLM KMOD should not work. But the fact that DLM KMOD works, that means the uh, factor from the driver itself being proprietary was like less likely. So, um, and then we can look at the uh, performance figure. So uh, I'm too lazy, so I only run the GL Mark II benchmark, and as you can see here, is the performance of the RTX 2070 when it passed to a VM. And the blue one, well, they're both blue, is the uh, RTX 2070 when it runs on bare metal. But this result may not be totally accurate because I cannot pass through all my coils and RAMs. And sometimes OpenGL does have, has the problem that the CPU might actually throttle the uh, GPU because there's the, NQ, uh, the GPU try to enqueue commands and the GPU actually wait for the CPU to enqueue more commands, things like that. I mean, it's probably the opposite, but. Um, the f other thing that's very interesting is the uh, Intel GVT, which is like a technology that allow you to create a virtual GPU from an Intel integrated GPU. Uh, of course, that means you can pass it to virtual machines. And the cool thing about it is that actually all, most of the code are already available in i9-15 DLM driver. So that means it might only need like very little tweak uh, for us to get it working. And once it works, it probably just appears as some PCI device that you can just pass through to the virtual machine, and the fact that it's designed to run as like a vGPU might help us avoid a lot of uh, issues. So 
I get, get, get a little bit too quick here, but the reason why I get, want to get it quicker to the future work and work in progress is, again, back to the uh, thing we talked about, the initialization thing, which brings us to the website. So when I investigate like what happened that causes the GPU not being able to initialize again, automatically you can think about a few factors. The first factor is um, the PPT driver. The second factor is the GPU itself, because if the GPU actually has some limitation imposed by the vendors, then of course the vendors will try their best to stop you to do uh, pass-through. And the third one is actually the gas OS. Um, originally, I thought it's the um, GPU's problem uh, because of the NVIDIA thing. But later, when I see when DLMK mod works, it kind of made me uh, rethink about it because DLMK mod is an open source driver. So if the vendor really try to do something special to prevent um, the GPU being initialized again and again, then it should not really happen to uh, DLMK mod because open source developers, they are less likely want to uh, impose this limitation. And then it goes, and then we, uh, after investigating more, uh, I move on to the gas OS and I realize maybe it's possible that uh, when the FreeBSD gets shut down, does not really tear down the graphics card correctly. If that is the case, then the graphics card is still in the state of like already being initialized. And if the PPT driver does not do anything, then the GPU will still st stuck in the state of uh, being initialized, and hence it cannot be initialized again. And the third uh, possibility is actually the um, PPT driver itself, because uh, I just figured out like 13 minutes ago. Uh, I find this very interesting thing on GitHub uh, when I investigate the um, GPU pass-through on Linux. Because I know on uh, Linux, on KVM, it is possible to reuse the GPU again and again. So it is sensible thing to do to actually see uh, what they do to enable it. And instantly you can see they have like this start and stop script here. Uh, let me try to make it bigger. Uh, I can't. But anyway, uh, you can see when it try to uh, start the, to pass through the GPU, actually stop the X, of course. But then it actually unbind the VT consoles. So, and after unbind the VT consoles, it unbind the uh, EVI frame buffer, and also it uh, detached the PCI device using the lib, um, the equivalent of PPT thing. After that, they basically load the uh, VFIO kernel module, and then they actually then pass through it to um, the KVM gas, and it works. And when they stopped, um, they actually do the same thing again, but this time they reattach the driver. So it made me think about if it's possible that uh, our PPD driver is doing is missing something, that maybe it's not detaching or retaching those uh, device correctly to cause the GPU not being initialized, uh, I mean, de-initialized correctly. So I get I think I go a little bit too fast. And um actually that's pretty much uh what I want to say basically just like a report of what's going on. So are there any questions? So I'm wondering how you could use the same GPU on the host and in multiple guests at the same time. With Intel, you said there's a 
virtual yep. GPU. That's if on GPU. other operating systems, uh, is it possible? And, and what mechanism are they using for NVIDIA and AMD? Uh, I think NVIDIA has their own prepared, I mean, they have like a series of GPU that's f uh, for virtual machine. Uh, but that those are really expensive. So, and I don't have one, so I don't have the details. But for the Intel one, uh, what it does is basically allow you to create like um, vGPU out from the integrated GPU, and this will allow you to, uh, you actually can create multiple of them. The only limitation is like each guest can only uh, use one of them. And from my understanding, uh, the guest can actually use those GPU with the Intel i9-15 driver. So the driver issue probably won't be a problem because as long as they know, uh, can use i9-15. From NVIDIA, I'm not sure, but they might have their own proprietary technology to do that. And I, yeah. Actually, I have a friend who works in NVIDIA. He tried to get me one of those graphics cards, but unfortunately, last few months, uh, I was, I'm not able to do a lot of research because um, as you know what happened in Hong Kong, so I was never able to get my hand on those uh, GP, GPU. Before running your OpenGL benchmarks inside the VM, did you recreate the CPU topology inside Beehive? So that the CPUs were pinned and matched? Uh, <coughs> not really, but what I do is like, I basically just um, run it from scratch using the same Beehive script and then, but I didn't use that H flat, but I realized something uh, strange. If I pass through too much uh, CPU or too much RAM, to Beehive, I actually crashed Beehive with unable to set up memory. But I'm not sure if it's like an AMD problem. So the best thing I can do actually is to pass through four GP, uh, CPU to Beehive and 16 gigabytes of RAM. But of course, on bare metal, it's like a huge difference, right? Because I actually get 32 uh, threads and 64 gigabytes of RAM. But I don't think the CPU should throttle the GPU performance that much, though. Any other questions? Uh, you mentioned that uh, in when you're loading from loader.conf, mm -hmm. having NVIDIA mode setting kernel driver loaded and the ZFS kernel driver loaded. Oh yeah. That it would there wasn't enough memory for the two. Mm -hmm. um, on my laptop. Uh, it, that's exactly what I'm doing and it, and it works fine. So is this something that was only in guests that you found to be a problem or also in the host? Uh, I f mostly in guests. On host, I once load tons of drive, I mean tons of modules with loader.conf and it worked fine. But on guests, it never worked. Um, on my ThinkPad, it actually sometimes when I load like uh, ASNI, instead of as and NVIDIA modules, I get the same issue as the guess. So the limitation is in FreeBSD's UFEI loader. It has to do with the bootloader. The way EFI booting works, we have to make a temporary buffer that we copy the kernel modules into, and then we exit EFI, we copy that into the right place, mm -hmm. and the bias bootloader doesn't have that. So because the guests are booting EFI, I suspect that we overflow the size of that buffer. And there is like a you can, there's a tunable by default, I think it's 64 megabytes on mm -hmm. any 64, you can make it bigger if you need to. Oh, you that's awesome. You have to read awesome. the to do it. But that's, I think, the limitation you're hitting. It's not specific to guest, it's specific to booting EFI instead of bias. Yep. So uh, it's actually quite interesting to discover this stuff. And some of you might wonder where are Linux? The reason why Linux are not here because I have such a hard time configuring Linux to work correctly. For example, when I have a Ubuntu uh, guest and when I try to make it default the GPU to the um, slot that I assigned, somehow it just crashed without even booting, so I was never able to test well. And in addition to my slides, I should remember one more thing, which is that on Linux and on, I, I once tried to pass through to Linux and it worked without outputting the graphics directly to the monitor, but I suspect the GPU itself is still functional, but
but it won't uh, run CUDA. As far as I know, uh, even sometimes in KVM, CUDA just won't work. So running CUDA in a VM is probably not quite possible. But uh, other things like running a virtual GL server uh, probably should work. And that's actually exactly what I do with my 2070 graphics card. Uh, I run a virtual GL server in the VM and then I just ask my host to use it because my host is running current and it cannot run the latest NVIDIA driver. So any other questions? If I remember correctly, uh, sorry, if I remember correctly NVIDIA uh, broke uh, CUDA inside virtualized GPUs on purpose starting with Pascal. So ah, that may be why. To force you to buy Quadro cards. Yeah, and it's a lot more expensive. <laughs> yep, any? So I have tested the fast GPU. My whole time is tested for <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, so as a side note regarding the CUDA, mm -hmm. I have tested the um, pass-through also with VMware, mm -hmm. and I was able to pass through the GPU and also run, run CUDA code in there. Oh, wow. With the K40. Come on, it's a K. Yeah, one generation older than. Yes. Yeah, and that is like a consumer yeah. graphics card. So <laughs> that doesn't have, that's cheating. <laughs> uh, any other questions? If not, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you.